Welcome to the Dadpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Oliveira. And today I have the pleasure of speaking to Kim Daly. She is a franchise expert, consultant, motivational speaker, coach. I mean, she's doing a lot of stuff. She And she's got over 20 years experience to share with you guys. You know, our listeners here, Kim, they are entrepreneurs, business owners, marketers, leaders. And I thought it was just going to be a great idea to bring you on here because there's lots of ways you can get into business. The SBA just reported five and a half million new businesses were started last year, which is the record by far. Five and a half, that's a lot of businesses. And I'm assuming some of those were franchises and franchising isn't a mystery, but I wanted to bring you on here because from my experience, you really want to make sure you have a consultant, someone who really understands the ins and outs of franchising. So without further ado, welcome, Kim. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for that introduction. And you're so right here at Fran Choice, which is the company that I am actually kind of like a franchisee of. My business is to help other people invest in franchises. We've been in business for 22 years and we had a record year in 21. It was our largest year ever. So definitely five and a half million new businesses were started. A lot of those were franchise businesses. And how did you get into that? So before the 20 years, what were you doing? What led you to be a consultant in that industry? Yeah. So nobody, I think, you know, franchising finds you somewhere along your path. Nobody wakes up one day, especially to be a franchise consultant says, oh yeah, like I'm going to go become a franchise consultant. Like most people don't even know that what I do exists, right? Sure. Until somebody, until they mention something about franchising and somebody that knows me says, oh, you know, I bought my franchise. I use this consultant. So I actually was an entrepreneur and I was running my own businesses, but I had right out of college, I had worked for a franchise consulting company for a couple of years. So I had some industry experience. I sort of understood what franchising was about, but I was an entrepreneur at heart and I wanted to go out there and conquer the world on my own. I'm a health and fitness girl. So I started multiple companies in about a five-year period, sort of one thing led to another. And um, as you and I were talking, it led me to South Florida and I was living down there for a few years. But uh, when 9-11 happened, I, I wanted to move back home to New Hampshire. And I also found that as an entrepreneur, I was very lonely. It's very like make it up as you go. And there's nobody to bounce ideas off of. Even if you have a business partner, it's, you know, it's one or two people against the world. And um, I had, so someone came to me and said, Hey, there's this thing called Franchise, And I think you'd be really good at it. And I had been a personal trainer back in college. And I looked at the model and I thought, well, that's sort of just like being a personal trainer. You know, I'm coaching people through a process that changes their life. Only this time we're talking business ownership instead of fitness, something I had five years of experience trying to figure out on my own and absolutely knew that entrepreneurship was really hard. And who knew, Alex, that that decision would take me to February 14th of 2022 marks my 20th anniversary with wow. Franchise. I am the I am America's top franchise consultant. I have helped thousands of people change their life achieve the dream of business ownership. I'm able to travel the country as a motivational speaker, just motivating people to the dream. And who knew? Who knew? Wow. Well, congratulations on all front. I mean, if you can do something in life for that long and continuously produce the, you know, the success that you are producing, clearly you're enjoying doing it and having success. So congratulations. And to all the business owners that you, you know, the lives you've touched because as a service provider, which Often what I bring on here are B2B service providers, whether it's a marketer or in your case, a franchise consultant. These are all people who are helping businesses move forward, right? And in the yeah. case of motivational speaking, it's the same thing, right? You're trying to get people into a mindset so that yes. they can believe in their dream and then go after it. Because if you don't go after it and do it, it just doesn't get done by itself. And I love your background in fitness because fitness to me, I always use either sports, fitness, or, or cars as analogies for business. And fitness is so true because, you know, you don't get results if you don't do it. Right. right. There's so I have so many. And plus, like, it's something that a lot of people can relate to. So a lot of the subjects in and around franchising are unrelatable to the average person who's never thought of owning a business. And when you can bring up an analogy, like, for example, like when people say to me, well, if franchising, you know, if that franchisor is so good, why do their franchisees fail? 
And I'm like, okay, well, let's think about a personal trainer in a gym. So I could be the best personal trainer in the world. I could have the most up-to-date science. I could have the best equipment to offer you, right? You come in, I take you through a process, but ultimately as your trainer, is it my responsibility to make your body change? Mm-hmm. No, it's no. your responsibility to make your body change. And that's the setup of a franchise. The franchisor is there to create the environment for success, provide the toolbox, the marketing, the technology, the training, the motivational support, the accountability support. But if the people don't, the plan works, but if the people don't work the plan, that's why franchises fail. In my world over here, in the pristine world of franchise. The franchisors are not going out of business. Like that's part of why I have a business to lead people to the right franchisors, the ones that actually have knowledge and and experience and financial, the capital to build a brand, right? That's part of why I have a business. But in the the big bad world of franchising, there are definitely companies that are not going to make it. So failure in my world is mostly... I will never say never or always, right? It's, those are two extremes, but mostly franchisee created. Right. And I think it's it's just like any other career choice. So if you're going to work for a company, I often speak to uh, you know college students and I try to explain to them that you need to discover more about yourself, do a disc assessment and mo- find out what your emotional intelligence is, all that stuff before you marry yourself to a company or a career, because it may, may not be the right one for you. And in business, when I mentor entrepreneurs, I try to say the same thing. Like, don't get into something that you're not the right fit for. Maybe you don't even have the right skills or passions for that. And if you keep asking the questions you might come to the conclusion that it's not right for you. But if you just kind of wake up one day and say, I'm going to buy a franchise or start a business here without really thinking it through, I think that's where people get into trouble. So talk to me about how you help, let's say an entrepreneur comes to you and says, I think I want to buy a franchise in the home improvement industry. Sure. And, I, yeah. and I say home improvement because I have experience with home improvement and, and franchises like um, uh, Liners Direct and Bath Fitters and a few others around the country. So how would you know that they're a good fit for, aside from the finances, like let's just say they have the finances beyond that, like how do you work with them to figure out that they're the right fit for that industry? Yeah, I love it. So it's never my job to tell anybody that they're a fit or not. That is 100% on them. I'm not here to play God with your life. It's my job to be the resource, to ask the questions and help you think the conversation all the way through. So when people come to me with an idea or without an idea, it doesn't really matter. Those with an idea, I'm going to say, okay, let's put the idea off to the side. The most important thing I want to know from my candidates is why are you thinking about investing in a franchise? I'm infinitely more interested in their why, because that's the fuel to their dream. That's their personal power. Know why? This is just an intellectual exercise, right? Right. Because anybody can explore, but only 1% of the people can actually push through and say yes to that dream. If I'm investing my time with you, you're investing your time with me. I want this to be a worthwhile exercise. And sometimes it is just to sort of gain the knowledge to figure out now's not the right time. And that's perfectly acceptable. Just because you work with me doesn't mean it has to work out. But for those people that it doesn't work out for, we figure that out within about one week of the process. It's about one to two conversations with me because I know how to get people to that place where they go, oh, I'm not ready for this, right? And then for those that go on, it's about six to eight weeks to a competent and confident yes. So when they come to me, Alex, I learn about their background, their interests, their skills, their finances. But again, the most important thing we're doing is a vision, a goals and dreams worksheet. We're we're projecting forward three years, five years, 10 years. What are you envisioning? What's different about your life in that time? And how, what role does this business play in getting you from here to there? Is it the entire thing? Is it like a piece of a puzzle? So you have rental properties, you have other businesses, you have a full-time job in addition to the revenue coming from this business. So at some point in the future, you have diversified revenue streams that you own and control. So when people tell me that, that starts to give me pieces to the puzzle. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is ask them to wipe the slate clean. People think they know what they want, but in my experience, once you get them clear, because people will say, well, when the right business comes, 
then I'll buy it. The right business will never come, just like the right time will never come, right? Mm -hmm. The right business has a really funny way of showing up when the candidate is clear about what they're trying to accomplish through the business. So therein lies the, we need a vision. (laughs) What are we using this business for? Job replacement, investment income, passive income, building a legacy for your family, right? There's so many different routes and all of those things will determine what I start thinking about for you. So every business isn't run exactly the same. Some franchises need a full-time owner. Some want Mm -hmm. a part-time owner. Some are less than five hours a week. So first we have to be clear on the role that you want to play, the skills that you have, the money that you have. Money, like buying a car, money creates options. You don't need millions and millions. You can start with 20, 30, 40,000. There's franchises in all different levels. Mm -hmm. But so I have to do these qualifying things first. Then I have to wipe the slate clean and say, just go take my hand and let me lead you to the ideas. Because most people, Alex, in this process, most of my candidates come to the conclusion that if they're making the kind of money that they want to make and living the quality of life that they want to have, and that requires some amount of money, right? It doesn't really matter what the business does. So it takes all of the pressure off of the business. Now, The business has to align with the person ethically and Mm -hmm. be something that you're going to be proud to put your family name on and your time into. We're not buying a hobby. Kim loves to work out. It doesn't mean the only business for me is the gym, right? right? I can take the characteristics of the gym is a positive life-giving environment where I'm directly engaged with people in a process or in in an opportunity to help them better themselves. You know, it's a place that's social. You can, I can take those characteristics and apply that to many different businesses that Mm -hmm. I think a candidate like me would go, wow, I never would have thought about that, but that makes a lot of sense. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I mean, it's again, a play on your fitness background. You're really coaching them through everything rather than just like telling them, here's what you need to do. You're asking the questions and uncovering sort of like, where are the blind spots and making them think about the things that maybe they're not going to think about if they just go to a franchise expo or pick up an entrepreneur magazine and start calling and ordering a kit from everyone. It's like, and I've, and I've heard, I know people personally who've done that and say, Alex, can you help me? And I said, listen, it's just like a business plan. You know, it takes time. So whether you're starting something from scratch, um, um, like I'm mentoring a young guy right now, him and his partners are launching a new app. First time entrepreneurs, they're in their early twenties, lots of unknowns, you know, lots of unknowns, but they're getting into it because they discovered something that there's, there might be a need in the market. So they think, whereas what, with what I think you're offering when you are guiding them through a, a, a franchise, and I've had this conversation with other entrepreneurs, is the franchise offers you that proven business model that offers you an exit strategy baked in if you're looking long-term, yes. right? If you do it yes. right. So talk to me about that a little bit, the difference between you might start a business, may, may take you five, seven years to build it, and you might still not have a legacy or, or, or a, an exit strategy. How about yeah. with a franchise? It's a proven model. Okay. So Alex, first, let me say this. I haven't said this yet. So I am building the largest content resource on the internet on YouTube. So please, if you haven't, if you, uh, we haven't talked about my YouTube channel, but it's kimdaily.tv or just go to YouTube and search for Kim Daily. I have hundreds of videos on all topics, franchising, business coaching, mindset coaching, dispelling myths, interviews with franchisors, interviews with franchisees. It is absolutely the largest content site right now, but it is only going up, 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 up. So please check out my YouTube channel, kimdaily.tv. So to, to answer your question, the difference between an entrepreneur and a franchisee. So an entrepreneur, like your friends, they have an idea. A lot of people come to me and like, I want to own a business, but I don't have an idea. An entrepreneur has time. And an entrepreneur has to have patience, has to be uh, creative because you have to trial and error things, right? And a lot of money. The reason that 90% of small businesses fail is not because people don't have great ideas. It's typically because they run out of money trying to figure out how to get this, get this thing cash flowing positively. 
Yeah. Now over here in the franchise now, and I'm not like, I'm not totally pro franchising. There's a place for both. Listen, if we never had entrepreneurs, we would have no new franchises. That's right. Every, every franchise starts out as an entrepreneurial business, right? Yep. So in the franchise world, somebody's already gone out, flushed out the idea, figured out the the customer avatar, figured out the marketing, the messaging, the coloring, where to advertise, how much money to advertise, how long it's going to take to get enough customers calling or coming in to build a profitable business. They're going to be able to give you that proven business plan. You also don't have to have any experience. I don't need widget masters over here. I need CEOs. I need people that have sales skills, operational skills, management skills, leaders, people who want to focus on their business, not in the business. Mm -hmm. The entrepreneur will spend many, many years in the business. It's very hard to scale a business when you're in it. I can take an executive who says, look, I'm looking to transition from corporate America where I make the half a million dollars a year. How quickly can I replace that income in a franchise? Well, we can build out a plan from day one where, you know, with a plus or minus, but he can see and validate with other franchise owners that, you know, maybe it's five locations that all net to him a hundred, a hundred thousand, and he can get those five locations open within three year period. Mm -hmm. Right. How many entrepreneurs can get one location up and cash flowing and feeling good in, in three years mm -hmm. over here, I can take the executive and in three years, he could have five locations. So it's about the scale. So we're compounding that because we're leveraging what somebody else has created that toolbox. And that's what that franchise fee is for the franchise fee. I call that the cost of entry. It opens the gate to Disneyland and it buys you instant access to the ready-made business plan, initial training, technology, marketing, vendors, national buying power, branding, and, and then ongoing support. Cause it's not just about like teaching you a, a license. If you buy like the license to use some, a product, you know, you might get some initial training, but then you're off on your own right. in a franchise. We pay back in a royalty back to the franchisor because we want that partnership. That widget, that product or service has to adapt, has to evolve, has to keep changing with the times, with the customer, with the competition, right? So it's a business is a living, breathing, dynamic thing. It's not just a one and done. So in a franchise, you have this corporate entity and it's their job to be making those big global decisions. And you're freed up to just focus on living your life, managing your team, scaling your business, and figuring out how to be successful locally. But you're mm -hmm. also contributing ideas back to a corporate office because mm -hmm. that's how franchisors learn. They learn from their franchisees, right? So one feeds the other, but that royalty payment goes back to the franchisor. That is their revenue stream. Franchisors are in the royalty business. Their, their goal should be to drive up the average unit volume because mm -hmm. that's going to equate to more royalty payment to them. But the reason you pay that is for that ongoing support for the betterment of this of this widget product business opportunity. Yeah, and I think it makes sense, right? Obviously, if you have a, a uh, the support, that business toolkit you were talking about, everything from financing to marketing and sales uh, and all that training and support, you have to pay a fee, right? Um, and so if you started it from scratch, like if we did a, a chart, on the pluses and minuses or pros and cons of starting on your own versus a franchise, it's very clear where there are advantages and disadvantages to both. But certainly I think this is just my opinion and I don't own a franchise, but I'll say this from having worked with many franchises in a marketing capacity, usually my other company, we do marketing, right? That there is a much lesser risk. Generally speaking, uh, if I'm taking on a new account, that is a franchise that is a proven, uh, uh, has a proven, proven business model, even if it's a new market versus if I take on a startup, if I take sure. a startup, generally speaking, most of them to your point within three to five years are struggling and they're out of money, out of time, and then they fold, which is why I think, again, franchising is always a, a great um, sector to work with because they know the customers too, right? 
Yeah, well, here's the thing. So a franchisor that's backed by private equity can steal somebody from Madison Avenue to create real branding power versus an entrepreneur who has an idea to bring a widget to market who's probably not a marketer. Mm -hmm. And then they're trying to figure out how to market their business. And they don't have deep, deep pockets to be able to build a brand around that no. most people don't, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like it's night and day. When you zoom up above franchise, all franchises, I don't care whether it's Chick-fil-A, Ace Handyman Service, or some no-name brand new pioneering franchise in, in plumbing, we'll pick plumbing. Every single one of those businesses is a sales and marketing engine. Sure. That's what franchising is. That's why franchising wins, because every single business has to be in the customer acquisition business. And franchisors are 100 percent focused with their marketing, with sales efforts, using leveraging technology, but on customer acquisition. So when you look at that royalty payment and people say to me, oh, well, if I go do this on my own, I don't have to pay that, you know, 8% royalty. It's like, really? 8%? Ask yourself this question. Do you believe that by being a part of this franchise with this, this marketing and this tool and that track record, no, let me even said anything about the track record, right? Franchisors have to disclose their success or failure rate to you. Mm -hmm. Franchising is a, a, an industry regulated by the Federal Trade Commission. So inside their franchise disclosure document, they have to report that, you know, 4% of their franchises failed over the last three years or 10%. The, the vast majority of the companies I work with are like upwards of 95% successful. So there lies like, why are you going to be in the small percent of the people that are not versus the very large percentage of people who are, who during your due diligence process, you have access to. You can talk to those people to see what are they doing? Are they happy? Knowing what they know now, would they do this again? All right, so that's just a tangent. They have this franchise disclosure document. But the, the point I was making before that was regarding uh, marketing. Mm -hmm. I forgot. Um, well, it was marketing. I, what I was talking about was, you know. Wait, hold on. I, I got I, I to make this point because this is really important. The 8% the, the royalty. So people will say, you know, I don't, why do I have to give back an 8% royalty as if they're getting ripped off? And I'm like, look, the only question to ask yourself is, do you believe that by being a part of this franchise with that marketing and those tools and that success rate and all those other franchise owners that you can be work alongside of and be colleagues with, that you can make 8% more than if you go do it on your own. I mean, before a candidate does any homework, they should sure. be like, you know, when you look at, we'll pick a trade since you said home improvement, like Serta Pro Painters, the largest painting company in North America, right? They're, they're it's almost a billion dollar company. Wow. What is Serta Pro? A sales and marketing company. Not one of their franchisees or any of the franchisees employees paint anything. The largest painting company in North America and nobody's painting? No. <laughs> You're finding Joe Painter guy, yeah. the trades guy who's good at what he does. They're out doing what they do, bidding on jobs, winning customer trust and then feeding that that work to the trades people who are mm -hmm. contractors to them. So the average third of pro franchisee does like, I don't know, one and a half million dollars a year. So when you're like, how can I afford to give 8%? Well, yeah, if you're comparing it to the average Joe Painter guy who's just painting job by, you know, but when you're looking at building a multi-million dollar business, 8%, it's like, you, you it doesn't matter. Well, and I, and I think there's something to be said for this for obviously people who are a little bit later in life and, and have attained certain wealth. If they're looking for um, a business to, to invest into, because I see that too, with whether it's VCs or people investing in crypto, or they want to invest in equities or a business or, or a franchise. To me, when I look across all of those, if you look at the market today, over the last four or five weeks, there's been a, a huge correction, about 10%, especially in the NASDAQ. And, yeah. and, and I have friends who are day traders and some who are crypto guys. And it's like this roller coaster, right? And I'm not saying don't do that because I certainly invest across the board and even in real estate. And there's nothing that is guaranteed. Everything has its seasons. But when you look at um, franchising, most of the companies that we're talking about here today, whether it's Serta Pro or uh, a friend of mine who owned the Dunkin' Donut, a bunch of the Dunkin' Donuts, like 
those are services that are always in demand, right? They're always in demand. So not, not that it's fail proof because let's face it, when there's a, a really tough recession, everyone suffers, but you're less likely to lose your investment than you were if you were investing in cryptocurrency or in the market, right? Right. Well, a franchise is a tangible asset. So right. an asset that's building you equity, that's creating tax advantages. So if we go to Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or the Cash Flow Quadrant, you know, you want to have those investments in tangible assets. That's right. So that's where franchising wins on that business side. But better than real estate, a franchise is better than real estate because it's producing business cash returns. So I often meet a lot. Of, I work with a lot of investors who have a lot of equity, but they don't have any cash. They're like, I need a business that produces cash you know, but they don't want to put in a lot of time. So franchising also compared to entrepreneurship allows you to work on your business, the right one, not every franchise. This is part of why I have a business again, because I understand what franchisors are looking for people to be full-time and what franchisors are okay with semi-absentee, even toward almost absentee. But a business will, a franchise business will never be truly absentee, you know, mm -hmm. even in like, a laundromat. We have franchises that are laundromats. Owners are still probably putting in five hours a week mm -hmm. to come in and get their coins and go to the bank. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, compared to entrepreneurship, again, where you have that, you, you're going to be in it and in it and in it trying to figure it out. I can take an executive mindset or somebody in the second half of their career saying, look, I've traveled the world. I've worked so hard. I want, I don't want to go from that to nothing. I want a little bit of activity, but I don't want to be 40 hours a week even. Okay. There are franchises that can meet you at that part-time or a little bit less than part-time level, but where you still can build and scale something to that executive income that you're used to being worth. And then at the end of that, create a value that you can sell. Franchise businesses are going to sell faster than their entrepreneurial counterparts and for higher multiples. Why? Because there's more validation. That's right. the, the incoming buyer doesn't just have to look at your books and wonder, are these legit? They can go validate with all the other franchisees in the system. They can talk to the franchisor and look at the vision of this company and where this thing is going and say, okay, if I pay this four multiple or six multiple, you know, am I going to be able to get that back and then still make money on top of that based on where in the trajectory or the growth pattern, um, you know, the growth cycle that franchise brand is. So there's just a lot more due diligence that a buyer can do, which gives and proof, which gives your asset more value. That makes sense. Now, Kim, you and I were talking about before the podcast, I was mentioning to you about a, a story about someone who invested in a franchise that went south. And the, the question I want to ask you is, do you have this YouTube channel? I really want to make sure people are directed to your YouTube channel for reliable information because, you know, talk to us about the importance of not just depending on Google or these marketplaces that list a bunch of different, it's a directory, right? Of like franchises. There's a ton of them, not just leaning on your own research to order every kit and marketing package from every franchise and then compare it yourself. So the importance of having a consultant like yourself, but also of choosing a, a, a channel to do your research like your YouTube channel. Oh, thanks, Alex. So yeah, I mean, I take my business really, really seriously because what I do, it saves people money and heartache, not to be overly dramatic, mm -hmm. but it does. Not all franchisors are created equal. And when you have someone like me that has 20 years of experience and ultimately, mm -hmm. guys, when you look at, when you invest in a franchise, what are you actually buying? What you're actually buying is a partnership. It's people. The brand, the widget, the service is only as good as the people and the leadership behind that. So that's why we come away from the, I want to, I love the gym. I got to own the gym to let's find people that you can connect to, that you feel have the business acumen that you can rely on and that have training that's going to help you get up this learning curve and that are financially stable so that they have enough money to build this franchise brand because it costs a lot, a lot of money to build a franchise brand. It costs a lot of money to build a brand, 
right? So my job in the beginning is to get to know my candidate and figure out like among the three or 4,000 options out there, like what are the best three to five? But then my job is that you're going to be leveraging my relationships, right? So sometimes people will say, well, am I limited if I work with you, Kim? You can look at it that way, but all right, I prefer that you look at it like your time is maximized with the best of the best franchisors. Look, I'm not going to bring you a franchise that couldn't figure out how to get through 2020. Like, what a waste. Sure. You know, before you even get on the first phone call with them, that they have an amazing story of not just surviving 2020, but I mean, absolutely thriving. I work with a, fr a fitness franchisor that if I didn't tell you the name of it and I just told you their story, no matter what industry they're in, your mouth would drop when at their success during 2020. When you find out that it's fitness, you, you would be like, there's no way this information right. is true. And it's totally true. But how would you go? You'd go look at the F45 or the Orange Theory, and it's not any of those brands. It's a different one, right? It's <laughs> one that has 10 different brands underneath it. I know which one it is. I just came back from a conference with, with Franchise's top 100 franchisors. The, it's probably the most bringing together the most high achieving people in the entire franchise industry for one week in San Antonio last week. It wow. was awesome. I'm like armed with all of the, like what happened in 21, what these franchisors are looking forward to in 22 updates. Do they have a semi absentee model now? Are they only really looking for full-time owners? Do they have a new financing program? So I've got all of that information at my fingertips and in my brain and in my heart. These are relationships. This is what I do. That's why you go to kimdaily.tv. That's why you use an experienced franchise consultant. The other part to this, Alex, is once you have the companies, it's not enough. Because again, anybody can do the research. How do you actually say yes? You need someone like me. When I say I'm a motivational speaker, yes, I mean, I can motivate you to like, you know, get your dream. And But it's not that. I'm motivating people with education on how to conduct due diligence in a franchise. What are the questions? What should I be thinking about? Who should I be talking to? How do I get through this legal document? How do I finance this business? I am the resource for all of that. You have a hand to hold, a partner in this from day one, because franchising is always a partnership and your due diligence process should also be a partnership. So the great statistic out there is out of a hundred people that think about a franchise or look at franchising, one does. Do you know what my statistics are? One out of three, one out of two at certain times of the year. Like I say that not to scare people, to inspire you that if you come here with the dream, I can help you realize that dream. And that's because I've done it for 20 years. I know where all of the pitfall, pitfalls are. I know where all of the places are where people, you know, get anxiety. I'm going to coach you around that through that. Well, I, I'll tell you what, your, your passion is absolutely just bursting, right? Uh, through, through the podcast here, but also our listeners know that the, the type of leaders that I bring on the podcast here are people who we've done our due diligence to make sure that they're heavy hitters. They're really good at what they do in not just showing the content online because anyone can do that. There's a lot of people out there just creating content on your website, but we do our, I mean, you've authored books, you've, you've been a leader, you're, you're in the industry um, uh, conferences. And when, when you say like you have a ton of information for someone looking to get into franchising or expand their franchising operations, I can, I can vouch for the fact that my team and I, we've done the due, due diligence and we can see that you're one of the best in the industry. So we are absolutely thrilled that you came on the podcast today. And we want to thank you for everything that you're doing to inspire those small business owners to grow. Any parting thoughts, Kim? Yeah, you know what I didn't say? All of my services are free. <laughs> you never pay me any money. <laughs> wow. How about so, that? Yeah, I get paid by franchisors to do okay. this. They, they're not, they, they love what I do for them because I'm maximizing their time. I'm, I'm finding people with a dream and I'm refining that dream and getting them financially qualified and making sure the territory where they live is viable and open. So it's a win-win for you, the candidate, and for the franchisor. I put you together on that blind date 
is my partnership, my dating analogy. And hopefully we're going to end up at a marriage, you know, where I get to walk you down the aisle and lead you off to that franchisor. But even if it doesn't work out, you're going to learn a lot. We're going to have tons of fun. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fun people, by the way, that's the only criteria, right? It's stressful, but we're going to make it fun. We're going to make it light. And I'm never going to make you feel wrong for how you feel or your own thoughts. We'll flush them out together. I'll help you go find out to figure out if what you're thinking is in a, is real or is it an assumption that when you start asking the question, you see that there's a different side to that, like competition or saturation or, you know, COVID resistance or all these things that I know candidates are thinking, how do I know? Cause I've been doing it for a long time. So thank you so much for the opportunity to be here, Alex. So fun. So, so much fun. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you.